Hello, hello, welcome to Inklings with Irina, the weekly energy show connecting you to your intuitive guidance system. And today I wanna to talk about how to avoid getting consumed by the chaos of the world. There's a lot going on right now and there always seems to be something going on. And this is a topic that has come up again and again with my one-on-one -on -one clients this week and I'm offering them techniques that are helping and I wanna share that with you too, just in case you're at that point where anxiety and worry and fear and feeling for other people is consuming you. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Irina Miller. I'm an intuitive energy guide and energy alchemist who has been guiding women for over 20 years in how to navigate the world of being a big feeler, an empath, learning where their energetic boundaries end and others begin through a variety of sacred practices. And that's why I come on here to share with you too. And today, specifically, I have the top three questions that you can ask yourself when it comes to being an empath out there in the world and that moment, how to avoid that moment of getting overwhelmed with intense emotion because we feel so deeply. So when you jump on, give me a shout out, a hello, where you're watching from. I love to know where everybody tunes in from. It's so much fun. And I wanna start with a little story story of my experience growing up about my mom. Uh, you know, I was very blessed that I was raised by very intuitive parents and my mom was always, always sharing wonderful spiritual practices with me. And one that came up over and over again, um, and I wanna give you new techniques and tools for this that are up to date and in current time, but it's something she would call sympathy pains. And as empaths, big feelers, people who are open-hearted, who not only that phrase, you know, oh, you have to know, if to know someone, you have to walk a mile in their shoes. Well, I feel empaths not only do that, but also empaths, it's kind of like Freaky Friday. Did you ever see that movie, like the one with Jodie Foster way back when, and then Jamie Lee Curtis? I love those old Disney movies. But it's like where you literally swap bodies, where you're energetically experiencing it. And my mom had this ability as such a big feeler and empath empath to take on other people's pain. She called it sympathy pains. So if she saw me hurting and in pain, she would say, oh, I feel so badly that you're hurting. I wish I could take that pain from you. And you know what? Often she did and she would take on that pain. And what ends up happening though, is that becomes overwhelming. It's almost kind of like that Freaky Friday experience where we can, as empaths, take on so much of the pain and emotion of our loved ones that it becomes hard to navigate the world one, because we're running so much emotion and pain, but two, the energy that we're running for these other people, it doesn't fit with our own electrical current. I like to use the example of you know bringing a blow dryer with you to another country, let's say from the States to Europe, and you know obviously you can't quite plug it in, you gotta get an adapter, so you get an adapter, but even then the electrical current is different and it can blow out the hair dryer or the appliance. So by running other people's energy for them, we can short circuit and feel exhausted and drained, completely wiped out. So these are the top three questions I invite you to ask yourself to avoid getting stuck and paralyzed by intense, overwhelming emotions. The first one is, where do the emotions, so emotions, energy in motion, where do they show up in your body? Hmm. I don't know if you've thought about that one before. If you have felt emotions in your body, let me know. This is something in, in yoga we would kind of tongue in cheek playfully joke around about whenever we did hip openers because we'd say, oh, hip openers today. We store a lot of emotion in the hips. Let's grab the tissue box because inevitably one of us is gonna end up crying. And it's not just from the pain of opening the hips. It's because we store emotions in the body. You know, think of phrases like, have you ever said, oh, that's so-and-so, they're a pain in my neck or they're a pain in the you know the rear <laughs> I think there's a term called pitta p-i-t-a um, I anyway I learned that from an old student of mine pretty funny emotions show up in our body now why is this important to know about how can this help us well the why it's important is that we digest and translate the energy coming into our world think of it like you know energy is frequency or vibration and light waves are frequency or vibration and the light waves that hit our eyes and really even our ears first are translated so we can say oh 
that's the color green behind me on those leaves. I can interpret that. I can make sense of it and give it a frame of reference. You know, so let's say you have a friend who's being affected by the forest fires and the raging fires on the west coast is my, one of my clients she's friends and family and she's just she wants to help so badly and she's taking on their emotions where do you feel it where are you digesting that some of my clients they feel it in their heart some feel it in the throat our energy centers our chakras are there to help us digest and translate the information just like we would translate you know colors with our ears or our eyes and we're translating these emotions we're saying how do they fit in how do they work how can i be of service and of help now when you know where your main energy center is that you digest information through kind of like some people are visual learners or auditory we too have certain energy centers that are our primary energy centers that digest the energetic information coming in that help us make sense of everything. And knowing this is powerful because what it does is it empowers you to be really present for someone when they're sharing and to be sympathetic versus empathetic, taking on their emotions. Now the second question that's really important to ask yourself is, what is being consumed? And what do I mean by that? Well, what are you watching? What are you listening to? Um, whose viewpoints are you taking in? One of my clients who was hit pretty intensely this week and very much stuck in that overwhelm of intense emotions, she's been watching a lot of news reports. She's been talking with friends and family, trying to coordinate and help them find safe places to stay because their homes are in danger. And some of her friends have lost their homes and lost everything. And she's trying to help, but she's thousands of miles away from them right now. So she's doing her best. But what happens is when you know what you're consuming, you can be better prepared to receive the information and the energy. So here's what I mean by that and why it's important is that when we are consuming information, we want to make sure that we're grounded. So it's not like the old out of date energy light worker paradigm of taking on everybody's pain like a sin eater and having sympathy pains it's being able to be grounded and hold space for them so that you can listen with an open heart but not open to the point where you're taking it all on you're listening and you're holding space for them to share when you do that, when you know what's being consumed, you have the ability to take action and not have it overwhelm your being. And then the final thing, the final question that's very important to ask yourself, and all of a sudden I've blinked on what I wanted to say. Holy cannoli, what was my final question? I knew I should have written it down because there's so many questions to ask and I wanted to do the top three. Let's see if the angels can bring it back to me. Ah, hmm, ah, yes, thank you so much. What are you doing to feed your spirit? Ah, oh. now see what I did right there was a moment in time because I'm, I'm getting tuned in and, and um, excited about this is that we can get lost in the energy of a moment, but if we know how to quiet our mind and open our heart, we can hear the guidance. So like just there where the thought had left my mind, I paused, I tuned in, and I heard, feed your spirit. Because here's the thing, in order to really be present, to help others, we need to be energetically charged. We need to be able to feed our spirit. So like my car is dead right now. We haven't been able to jump it six ways to Sunday. It's been dead for like a week. And anyway, that's a whole other story, but we're charging this battery pack. And it's taking, you know, a good amount of time before the energy back pack can be charged enough to jump my car. If it doesn't have enough juice in it, it's not going to be able to help my dead car to bring it back to life. So same thing with light workers and empaths and any human being that walks the face of the earth. It's important to take time to charge your en energy pack, so to speak, so that you can be an inspiration to others. And we do that by feeding our spirit. That's how I call it or feeding your heart. And what does that look like? What does that mean? It means you do things that light you up, that bring you joy and peace. 
even in the midst of chaos, we find something like a um, humor to laugh or we find colors to brighten our spirits in the darkest and drabest of days. We find music that just elevates our heart. These things feed our spirit. And when you get that lift, amazing things happen. You are charged, energetically full, and you're able to go out there and make a difference. So top three questions recap that you should, or I don't want to say should, because we don't want to should on ourselves. but top three questions I invite you to ask yourself when you are looking to avoid becoming overwhelmed by intense emotions is number one. Oh, holy cannoli. I don't know why my brain isn't staying on track. What was my first question? Does anybody remember? I think I've got to rewind and go back and look thinking of a whole bunch of different things. But let's see, let's see if I can tune in and find my first question again. There were so many things that I wanted to say here. Hmm, all right, well, I won't worry about it. <laughs> It'll come soon. Let me know how you're doing right now. I'd love to know what's up with you. If you're looking for a way to really find that peace and that calm and to be grounded and to, yes, thank you. To know where the emotions are showing up in your body. That was the first question. Where are they showing up? How are you digesting the information? You know, how are you feeding your spirit? And what are you consuming right now? What are you taking in? It's important to know these things because we want to be in the world, but not of it. We want to be there to support our friends and family and loved ones. But if we do it in such a way that we're not grounded and we're just completely completely energetically in this vulnerable state will end up drained. Now that was an old paradigm of taking on other people's energy and running it as if it were our own to help. Now we want to be grounded, hold space, and be able to help our friends and our loved ones make that energetic shift they need to come back to peace. So thank you so much for being here and thank you for being a part of this journey. I would love to have you come join the group and continue the conversation. Just simply click my little energy bot above and my energy bot will help you out. I also have a wonderful meditation offered there. Really it's an energy clearing or a visualization so that if you have been taking on a lot of junk, that will help. All right, I'll catch you all on the flip side. Bye guys.